Hello, this is Maya. Hey, Maya, it's me. Mia, what's up? You haven't called in a while. Sorry, I've been so busy. How have you been? Well, lonely, and it's all your fault. Nah, I'm just teasing. I've been great. I'm finally getting used to having my own place. That's good to hear. Actually, I'm calling because I have a favor to ask. I know, I know. You want me to hold evidence for you. Sharp as always. There's a lot of buzz about this upcoming trial. I just don't feel safe keeping the evidence here. I got you. So, what is it this time? It's a clock. A clock. Yeah, it's made to look like that statue, the thinker, and it tells you the time. I thought you might like it. You always liked toys. Hey, I'm not a little girl anymore, sis. Now, now, you know I'm only teasing. Ah, I should probably tell you, the clock isn't talking right now. Huh? It's not working. That's lame. I had to take the clock out. Sorry. I put some papers inside it instead. Papers? Is that the evidence then? Hmm. Well, there's a possibility that it might turn out that way. Yes. Can you come by the office tonight, say nine, to pick it up? I'll be in the, uh, I'll be in a pre-trial meeting until then. Okay, sis, but I expect dinner, something good. Like, burgers! I could really go for a good burger. Okay, okay, we'll hit the usual joint. All right, it's a deal. Okay, sis, see you soon. Yep, I'll be waiting, Maya. Conversation recorded, September 5th. 9.27 a.m. Hi guys! Welcome back to another episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. Um, we are starting episode 2. And this is Sylvia, guys. Hi! If you are enjoying the series, please leave a like button, hit the like button, and hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment down below. What do you think about the whole, like, three trial thing? Um, like, if it was in, like, IRL, what would you think about that? All right, let's go on and find out what's going on. September 5th, 8.57 p.m., Faye and Co. Law Offices. Now, Miss Faye, I'll take what's mine, the papers. I'm sorry, but I can't give you what I don't have. Miss Faye, you are a poor liar. Why? I see it right over there. That must be the thinker that swallowed those papers. How could you know? Ho, ho, you are not configurous of my background. Gathering information is my business, you see. I, I should have been more careful. Ho, ho. My dear Miss Faye, I'm so very sorry. But I'm afraid I must ask you for one more thing. Your internal silence. Farewell, Miss Faye. Oh no! Mia! What's Lothal? Red, white, blue. September 5th, 9.08 p.m. Faye and Co. Law Office. Uh-oh, I'm late. Ugh, that's strange. Guess the chief left without me. She said her sister was coming over so we should all go out for dinner. What's that smell? Blood. Mia! Maybe she's in her office. Okay, is there... Oh, we get to examine. Look at the little magnifying glass. Okay, there is nothing here. So... Oh, wrong button back move okay office we gotta go to the office that smell blood <laughs> sis someone's there chief 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 who are you That strange girl dropped out cold. I left her lying on the office sofa. 
I went back to the chief where she laid under the window. Her body was still warm. I could feel it when I held her shoulders. Then, all too quickly, it began to fade. And so finally, she was cold. Chief! Salmon. Uh, it's encrusted with dry blood. How ironic that, that, that this become the murder weapon. Again. Okay. Chief! It's hard seeing her like this, but if there are any clues here... She was struck on the head with a blunt object. She probably died instantly. The thinker, lying next to her, must have been the murder weapon. Thinker, the murder weapon. Looks like a statue, but it's actually a clock made by Larry Butts. Hmm. There's some glass shards near the chief's body. Must be pieces of the glass light stands laying unbroken in the back of the room. Glass shards. The broken remains of a glass like stand. Broken beyond all recognition. Nothing else seems to be like a clue here. Hmm? A piece of paper. A piece of paper. It must have fallen from the Mia's hand. What could it be? A word written in the blood on the scrap of paper. Maya. Did Mia write this? This piece of paper is a receipt from a department store. Dated yesterday. She was dying. How could she write it? I think this is enough scooping, snooping around for now. I better call the police and find out what that girl was doing here. Uh, she's the sister? <laughs> Duh. That girl just now. Where'd she go? I put her right there on the sofa. Uh-oh. I hope she didn't run on me. Yes! Don't scare me like that. Um... Excuse me, but who are you? It's okay. I work here. Maya. Maya Faye. Maya. Faye. Maya! So Mia was right in this girl's name. Maybe I should show her the receipt. I never thought there would be a use for evidence like this outside of the courtroom. Sure. Before Mia died, she wrote a message with her own blood. She wrote it on the back of this receipt. The, th that's my name! Wh why? Why would she write my name? Please, just calm down. Wh why would the sister write my name? Uh-oh. Now I've done it. I better hurry up and call the police. Okay, where's the phone? Okay. Why is there no phone at the reception? Okay, there's a phone in the office with the body. Okay. Right, I better call the police. That's funny. A few of the screws on the receiver are missing. It looks like someone was halfway through taking it apart. Police! Police, come quick! What was that? Someone's screaming from outside the window. She's staring right at me. She's holding a phone in her hand. <laughs> the police sounds like they're coming this way freeze police all right i've detected dick gumshoe see gumshoe what an odd name we received a report from the building across the way see got a person saying they saw a current murder it must have been that woman i saw anyway i don't want either of you moving on one inch okay Great. Just great. Maya, wait. She wouldn't have. Nah. Wah! Excuse me! Eh. This word Maya here mean anything to you? Um, that. That's my name. What? The victim drew this here note in her own blood. See? With her dying breath, she wrote down the killer's name. Yes, it totally works like that all the time. C killer? I'm not- Case closed. You're coming down to the precinct, ma'am. What? Mia's younger sister. Maya was arrested on the spot. 
I was taken in for questioning and didn't get out until the next morning. My eyes were heavy, but I couldn't sleep. I sat around waiting for visiting hours to begin at the detention center. I had to talk to Maya as soon as possible. September 6, 9 or 7 a.m. Detention Center Visitor's Room. Wow, they have poor Maya locked up like a criminal. Oh, it's you, the lawyer. G good morning. Good morning. She looks so tired. Um, are you going to be my attorney? Well, that's what I want to talk to you about. Of course I will. First things first, I better get her cheer up. Yeah, of course I will. Cheer up. R really? Whoa, did I say the wrong thing? She looks sadder now. Um, w what's wrong? You don't think I could do it? I mean, we only had one case win, right? No, no one could. Who would believe me? Even you, when you found me in the office, you looked at me like I had done it. Did I look at her like that? No, no. I never thought. It, it's okay. I understand. And I've also heard about you. Heard? Heard what about me? I was talking to my sister on the phone the other day. Today was my junior partner's first time in court. Wow, really? How'd that go? It was quite the scene. Honestly, I was on edge the whole time. It's been a while. Ha, <laughs> so he crashed and burned. He's a genius. One of those that strike fear into the hearts of evil types. The only thing he's lacking is experience. Huh? Sounds like it was fun. Well, I know how to go if I ever get in trouble now. I don't know, Maya. I think you might want to wait. Give him three more years. That is, unless you want to be found guilty. What? That's what she said. I I'm sorry. I didn't mean to insult you. No, it's okay. It's true, I guess. But at the same time, I can't just sit by and watch. When I think of the person who did this to, me, my, to Mia. I know. Uh -huh. It's something I've been wanting to ask you. Yes. What's with the outfit? Oh, this? This is what all um, acolytes wear. It's my uniform, you could say. An acolyte? Like people in religious training? What is it that you do? Oh, it's nothing strange, really. I'm a spirit medium in training. Uh, a sp spirit medium? I'm pretty sure that qualifies as strange. Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Yes! We'll see. That morning, I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for her, an upcoming trial. Evidence? Yes, that clock shaped like the thinker. The one Larry made? How could that have been evidence in the case? Um, right. She says something about that. I remember. Do you, what, do you want to hear it in her own voice? Her own voice? Yes! I'm pretty sure a conversation is on my cell phone. You recorded it? Yeah, I forgot how to delete those things. So, you say you have a conversation with your sister on your cell phone. Let's hear it. Right. Oh. I just remembered that Sector took my cell phone. Sorry. Oh, right. Of course. Next time I see Detective Gumshoe, I'll ask him for it. I'll write you a note so you don't forget, okay? Sure, thanks. A conversation I had with my sister recorded on my cell phone. So you're an acolyte, uh, or medium in training. That's right. The Faye family, especially the women, have always been very sensitive to the spirit world. Wait a second. You said the Faye family. So Mia was into this stuff too? Of course. She left the mountain to follow her career, she said. Her powers were first class too. I I had no idea. Hmm. Wait. What? So you're a real honest to goodness spirit medium with ESP and all that? Yes. And training? Well, can't you contact me a spirit then? We could just ask her who killed her. I I'm sorry. I'm still in training. I couldn't do something on that level. Hmm. I thought that could be too easy. That would be, I thought that would be too easy. Um. Huh? Something that matter? Um. I was wondering. Could I ask you a favor? 
This is the address of a famous lawyer. My sister gave it, gave me this a long time ago. She said if I was ever in trouble, I should call him. And well, I'm in trouble. Do you think you could go ask him to represent me? Hmm. Sure. Sure, why not? I'll go ask. Thank you so much. I have no one else to turn to. Say, what about your parents? I, I see. Don't worry, leave it to me. Thank you. The trial's tomorrow at 10. What? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. What if the guy, ref this guy refuses? They told me if I don't find one, the state will pick an attorney to defend me. When will that happen? They're giving me until 4 this afternoon. And visiting hours are almost up. I better hurry. Right, I'll be back. First, I want fun. Could you tell me about the day of the murder? Sorry, I, I know it must be hard. No, it's okay. All I've been doing the last few hours is talking about it. I've kind of gotten used to it. We'll see. That morning, I got a call from my sister. She wanted me to hold on to a piece of evidence for an upcoming trial. That's the thinker clock the Larry made. It practically qualifies as a serial murder by now. So then, when did the you arrive at the office? It was right at 9 o'clock. The lights were off and I could smell blood. Then, then I found her, my sister. Thanks, Maya. That's all I need to hear for now. Okay. Let's go find this dude. September 6th, Grusberg Law Offices. I told him to the receptionist, the big boss is out. She couldn't say when he'd be back. It must be hard to keep track of everything when you're a famous lawyer. Not to mention a running office like this. I guess I'll just have to come back later. Okay. Alright, so he's not there. So let's go to the office and look around some more. September 6th, Fay and Co. Law Office. The office is still filled with the police officers. They're all busily searching for police. Hey, you there! This is a crime scene, pal. No trespassing. Um, sorry. Don't I know you from somewhere? Wait, you're that butt guy, aren't you? No, no, Phoenix Wright. How could anyone mistake me for Larry? Ah, guess I got the wrong name, Mr. Wright. Sorry about that. That butt guy, he was a killer. You're no killer, right? He was proven innocent. Um, right. And you were? Detective Gumshoe. Detective Swiss Shoes. Detective Gumshoe. Oh, these names, yo! <laughs> um, the gumshoot, wasn't it? Dick gumshoot? Right. At your service. Hang on! That's detective gumshoot to you, pal. Anyway, get the name right. And don't go calling me Dick. Hey, Dick. Get over there. Yeah, yes, sir. Be right there. Um, ahem. You're here, lawyer, right, pal? If you got business here, you better do it quick. Whew. He thinks I'm Maya's lawyer. How? <laughs> I don't think lawyers do this in IRL, but okay. About Miss Faye, did you do an autopsy? Hmm. You want to know the results, huh? Now don't go. Now don't look at me like that, pal. It's no use. She might have been your boss, but that doesn't mean you get any special treatment. All right, all right. You can see the report, but that's all. Autopsy report. Okay. A time of death, 9-5 at 9 p.m. Cause, single blunt force trauma. Death was instantaneous. Okay. Um, about Maya. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the trial. Sorry, pal, but this is one trial you aren't going to win. Why do you say that? The city's put prosecutor Edgeworth on the prosecution. Edgeworth. I'm sure you know what that means, you being a lawyer and all. Prosecutor Edward. That's right, pal. Mr. Miles Edgeworth himself. Wait, you don't you do know him, don't you? <sighs> of course I do. I know him. He's a feared prosecutor. He doesn't feel pain. He doesn't feel remorse. He won't stop until he gets his guilty verdict. Aw, don't talk about him that way. You make him barely sound human. Still, I'm afraid this pretty much decides the case. So Edgeworth is on this one. He hasn't lost a case since he became prosecutor at the incredibly young age of 20. Of course, there are rumors of back alley deals and forged evidence. 
All I know for sure is that Edgeworth hates crime with an almost uh, abnormal ap passion. I never imagined I'd be facing him so soon. Okay, let's see. So then I can present. Oh yeah, present. I was wondering, did you see Maya Faye's cell phone? Oh, that. I have that. Do you think I, you could give it back? Sure. I mean, wait a second, pal. Tricky lawyer. Uh-oh. He's on to me. Tell him straight. If I tell him why I want it, there's no way he'll give it to me. Something the matter? Oh, no. It's just, you know, detective. Nope. I know nothing, pal. Oh, okay. That cell phone has a lot of numbers on it. Like her boyfriend's. A cell phone holds all the little girl's sweetest and spiciest secrets. Ick! You're right. You're trying to confuse me. Sorry, pal. I already checked all the numbers in memory. Impressive. You're quite the detective. Uh-oh. Oh, here. You can have the phone back. There weren't any suspicious call records in there, after all. Seems he didn't notice the recorded conversation. Maya cell phone received from Detective Gumshoe. Holds a conversation between the chief and Maya. Check the court record for her to hear the conversation. I guess I'll have... I've asked all the questions I need to. You're all done, pal. Um, yes. Thank you. I'll be heading out now. Oh, wait. One more thing I wanted to mention to you. I don't suppose you're planning on talking to that witness. Anyway, you better not. No influencing the witness with your lawyer ways, pal. Come to think of it, I had completely forgotten about her. I mean, she's all pink. How could you forget, Phoenix? The witness. Yeah. Miss April May. I'm sorry about this, but I can't tell you anything about her. Well, you just told me her name. Miss May, huh? So you sent her home already then? Aha! You're truly, you're trying your lawyer tricks on me now. She's not to go outside her room until the trial. So she's still in the hotel across the way. I guess I should, I guess I should know better than to try to get your detective to leak information. You got that right, pal. Time to pay a visit to Miss May. Move. Okay. Okay, September 6th, Skatewater Hotel, room 303. Well, hello there, handsome. Um, hi. Smooth, right? Real smooth. You're the lawyer, aren't you? The detective told me. He said, don't say nothing to that lawyer, pal. Teehee. Memo to self. Thank Detective Gumshoe for making my job harder. Gee, this is all like something out of a movie. It's all so exciting. I can hardly contain myself. Oh, let me go freshen up so I can uh, look the part of the beautiful eyewitness. I pity Laura that has to cross-examinate this one. Okay, oh, oh, she's got... What? A bottle of two glasses are on the table. Somebody must be staying with her. Okay. The late summer sunlight streams through the window. There's the Faye and Co. Um, law Office's building, of course. You can see that there's an inside of the room pretty clearly from here. I think it would be a little difficult to recognize the face from out from the distance, though. Okay, why is there a screwdriver here? There's a screwdriver stuck in this drawer. I wonder what's inside. But let's take a look. Hey! Hey, hey! What are you doing? No touching! Oh, bad boy. You, you really shouldn't pry around in other people's rooms now. You wouldn't want to make me upset, would you? Upset? I thought she was going to explode for a second there. I wonder what could be inside the drawer. What do you, what do you think you could tell me something? I need you to describe what you observed at the time of the incident. Oh, observed. Incident. You sound like just like a lawyer in the movies. I like a man with a big vocabulary. Um, <laughs> gulp. Better not encourage her. Or, you know that thing that occurred, um, happened the other day? The bad thing? What did you see when it happened? I don't suppose you could tell me about it. Pretty please. Let me see. Um, well, dream on. If you want to know, you'll just have to come to court tomorrow, Mr. Lawyer. Oh boy. Um, could you just ex who exactly are you? Oh, Mr. Lawyer, are you hitting on me? N no. Hey, I'm just doing my job here. Tee-hee. 
you know, you're a cute one when you're black. You're cute when you blush. Believe me, this is the first time in my life I've blushed as such. Um, <laughs> right. Can you just tell me what is it you do? Well, no. Tee hee. And you had your little hopes up, didn't you? Oh boy. I see there are two glasses on the table. Is someone staying here with you? Oh, what amazing powers of observation. You must be one of those famous detectives like on television. Oh no, not me. I'm er, just a lawyer. Say, Mr. Big Detective, don't you go look for, why don't you go look for clues in the garbage? <laughs> Miss May doesn't like nosy little lawyers. Oh boy. She, she's something, that's for sure. All right, so let's go back and see if we can talk to the lawyer, dude. Hmm, seems like Mr. Chris Bergen's out. Well, maybe I should just wait here for him to come back. <clears throat> if that wasn't the most over-the-top clearing of throat I've ever heard. Aha, uh -huh. so you're the one that has been looking for me. Uh, yes, that's me. He looks even grander than I imagined. Hmm. That badge on your collar. Ah, uh, so you're a lawyer. Are you now? Yes, well, yes. What do you want? I'm not particularly busy these days. Please proceed. I'm not particularly busy. Okay. Not busy? Then how come no one could get in touch with you? Hmm. Something the matter? You came to see the one and only Marvin Grisberg, did you not? Well, here I am, boy. What do you want? Out with it. Um, well, sir, actually, it's about Maya, Maya Faye. Ah, uh, yes, Maya Faye. Go on. Um, why is that strange reaction? Uh, cha cha. I'm really quite busy here, son. I can't go taking cases on a day's notice. No, it's not quite, it's, no, it's quite impossible. Wait a second. How did you know the trial was tomorrow? Uh, him. Anyway, I'm afraid it's entirely impossible for me to represent her. I'm sorry. End of the discussion. What's going on? He refused me before I even got a chance to ask him. What do I tell Maya? <laughs> I just smack him. How can you just uh, refuse like that? Please tell me why you won't take the case. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, you see, it's just I'm busy, you see. But the client is Mia Faye's sister. Hmm. Him. Mia trusted you. She knew her sister would be in a good hands. Yes, yes, of course. I know that. However, I'm sorry, but I must refuse. Sorry. Goodbye. Creep. Fine. I don't have time to argue with you anyway. I'll go look elsewhere. Grumble. Think not. Huh? Did you say something? I think not. I said. What do you mean? I'm terribly, terribly sorry. But I'm afraid that no lawyer worth of salt will take one take on this particular case terribly sorry my boy why I, I cannot say I beg your pardon but could you leave now I've nothing more to discuss with you what's going on here well I got more stuff to talk to you dude sir how did you know Mia Faye she worked here a long time ago quite the apprentice that one learned my techniques in the blink of an eye she left one day quite suddenly she had a mission, you see. A mission? You can see it in her eyes. She followed it with a burning passion. Never looked back, that one. A painting. That painting's quite a painting. Aha, you notice. That's my pride and joy. Impressive, isn't it? Well, isn't it? The color of the sky, the hue of the seas, the wave of the straw hat. It's worth at least three million. I have no intention of parting with it, of course. No, I won't sell it. Not even to you. I wasn't interested. It's not for sale. I'm not buying. Jeez. Alright. Fine. Bye. Okay, let's go back to the detention center and tell poor Maya. September 6th, 3.42pm. Detention center. Visitor's room. Hiya. Oh, you're back. Did you find the lawyer? Um, well. What do I tell her? Well, see... Just be honest, I, but I don't think you should use that guy. He didn't seem healthy. He was all skin and bones. <laughs> he was all skin and bones? He was a chubby man. What really happened? 
You don't mean he refused to help? Er, I see. I've been abandoned then. What about your family? I only had my sister. My father died when I was very young, and I don't know where my mother is. Don't know. So she could still be alive. The women in my family have been mediums for generations. They say a lot of spiritual powers run in our blood. About 15 years ago, our family was involved in an incident. There was a man, and he, he, he ruined our mother's life. Ruined? After that, she disappeared. Several years after that, my sister announced she would become a lawyer, and she left the mountain. So, you live by yourself? Yes! I've gotten used to it. Oh, also, I had to become independent, or I would lose my powers. I feel bad for her, all by herself up on that mountain. So, who was that man who um, ruined your mother? About 15 years ago, there was an unusual murder case. It made quite a stir. Everyone was talking about it, apparently. The police were running out of leads, and they were getting desperate. Wait, they didn't use a spiritual medium, did they? The police convinced my mother to try to contact the victim. Wow, so what happened? The case was solved. We thought. You thought? The man my mother helped the police capture was innocent. The police consultation with a medium had all been carried out in secret, of course. But... A man found out about it and leaked it to the press. He told all the papers that my mother was a fraud, and the media jumped on it big time. She, my mother, became a laughing stock of the nation. I see. White. Excuse me? White. That was his name. My sister told me. White. Hmm. Just a little longer now before the state appointed lawyer comes, I guess. 4 p.m. Time's up. What should I do? Did I just leave her and go home? Defend her. I've made up my mind. I'm going to defend you whether you want me to or not. Why? Why? Well, I can't abandon you. Someone else is the culprit. I don't know why. I can't abandon you. No one is as sad as a person without any friends. I know. I've been there a long time ago. Why did I become a lawyer in the first place? Because someone has to look out for the people who have no one on their side. Maya, I won't abandon you. You can count on me. That's so kind of you. <laughs> well, let's fight this one and get you out of here. Right. Thank you. Whew. She smiled at least. She looks like an entirely different person. One last question. You are innocent, right? Yes! And I trust you. So you trust me too, okay? It's a deal. So, what next? There's something that's been bugging me. Just what was inside that strange woman's drawer? It was when I tried to look into that drawer that she got all defensive. There has to be something in there. Alright. Bye, Maya. I'm gonna go... I'm gonna go to a, a, a pink lady's hotel room. Peace! Uh, hello. Good afternoon, sir. Excuse me, you are. Ah, I beg your pardon, sir. I am the bellboy of this establishment at your service, sir. Oh, right. I just come up to the delivery room service, sir. Um, do you know where Miss May? Um, do you know where Miss May might be? Ah, I believe our guest Miss May is currently using the er, facilities. If you've no need of anything, I'll be taking my leave. Please stay as long as you like. Enjoy. Yeah! Wait, no, hey! Why does it seem like every time I'm coming here, I end up embarrassing myself? Wait, now's my chance to snoop around a bit. Ah, I almost forgot. Gah! You came back so quick! Might I ask you to inform Miss May that there is a message for her? Please tell her that Mr. White of Blue Corp phones. Oh, right. Sure. Mr. White of Blue Corp? Where have I heard that name? White. That was his name. My sister told me. White was the name of the guy who ruined Mia and May's mother. Could it be coincidence? 
I think not! Okay, examine this. There's a screwdriver sticking out of the half-open drawer. Now it's a chance to see what's inside. What do we have here? Wait, uh, a bar tap. Hmm. What would a woman like her be doing with a thing like this? Bar tap, add to the court records. Found in Miss May's hotel room. There is definitely something suspicious about this Miss May. Why would she have something like this in her hotel room? There's a story behind all of this. I know it. All right. I'll be using this a bit of evidence in tomorrow's trial, that's for sure. For Maya's sake. I'll get to this woman's bottom. Wait, I mean, you know what I mean. Oh, bellboy, still there? Uh-oh, time to scram. I look forward to ta- uh, ta I look forward to tangoing with you tomorrow, Miss May. In court. To be continued. All right. If you're enjoying the series, please leave a like and a comment down below about what you think about the three-day trial and stuff like that. Um, and hit the subscribe button for me. Everything is greatly appreciated. Till next time. Bye.